Hello, welcome to the Monday, August 22nd, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Brad on Friday posted a diary about an Astaroth malware infection. The case Pratt is investigating here actually happened that same day. So hot off the malware process, so to speak. The email in this case was in Portuguese and impersonating a Brazil based company. Uh, the attacker even registered a custom domain within the dot link top level domain to make the link more plausible. Once the user clicks on the link, uh, they will receive the malware in the form of a zipped batch file. The batch file will then trigger download of the actual malware. And as always, Brad offers additional details, indicators of compromise, and probably most valuable links to the packet captures, allowing you to actually redo the analysis and to learn by following in Brad's footsteps. And Amazon patched a vulnerability in its Ring Android app that could expose users' camera recordings. The vulnerability was originally identified by check marks, and it is interesting because it shows how native applications may be affected by cross-site scripting, even though you don't often think about them sort of as web applications or uh, rendering HTML, but that's in part sort of what's often happening here. The problem was rooted in the deep linking activity. Deep linking means you can sort of directly link to something and an activity in Android is something that you can, like in this case, specifically export in the Android manifest and then other applications are able to access this. And that's sort of where it starts to get interesting. So now a malicious application could access this particular activity, which of course immediately increases the attack surface here. In this particular case, it looks like uh, this activity was part of sort of Amazon's better neighborhood feature. It's where you are able uh, to share footage and such as part of a neighborhood watch function uh, within the Amazon's Ring app. Now, uh, the problem was that the app did not properly validate the URL. Any URL that includes the term better-neighborhoods in slashes would be loaded no matter the actual server the content came from. And then, of course, any HTML, any JavaScript would be rendered. This allowed attackers to inject arbitrary content into the app. And then, of course, you no longer have sort of your same origin rules and such because everything is being rendered inside the app. And the JavaScript that's now running has access to, for example, all of your tokens and such. In this case, it was possible to forward authentication tokens to a attack server that the attacker chooses. And then, of course, an attacker could use those authentication tokens to essentially use the Ring API to con download uh, footage, uh, other personal data and such from your account. Checkmarks reported a vulnerability to Amazon on May 1st and Amazon released a fix on May 27th. So some time has passed since then. Thanks for Checkmarks to wait a little while before publishing this and allowing everybody to update the app. Typically these apps update automatically, but double check from time to time that your mobile ads are up to date. So interesting, mobile apps may include browsers essentially sort of inside the app. And that apparently is also a problem for iOS. Apple always has emphasized privacy in its iOS operating system and limits how apps are allowed to collect data about users. But iOS does allow these in-app browsers to be embedded into the app to render HTML and yes, execute JavaScript. Security researcher Felix Krause took a closer look at this particular issue and found that, for example, Instagram, but also TikTok cleverly use this to evade some of the privacy restrictions imposed by Apple. So this only applies if a link that you're clicking on inside the app is opened in the app and not opened in your default browser, uh, like for example, uh, Safari. Instead, the page is rendered inside the app. And then of course, again, 
No same origin policy really applies here. Everything is controlled by the app. The app is able to record what sites you're visiting, also what content you're looking at, including, and I believe that was the case for TikTok, record any keystrokes that you are typing while you're using that in-app browser. To test what JavaScript in-app browsers inject, uh, Felix uh, set up a website, inappbrowser.com. Visit a website from within the app. Uh, that's important here, of course, and it'll display any additional uh, JavaScript. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.